Hey guys, it's Olivia here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today I'm here to give you a video on how I read Shakespeare. So this video is because of the All the World's a Page readathon that's happening at the moment. I am co-hosting it with Cara from Wild Book Garden and Julia from Shakespeare and such and we are just reading Shakespeare, enjoying Shakespeare's works, reading some retellings and having a lot of fun talking about it on our Twitter which I'll leave a link to down below if you want to join us or join in reading. I'll also leave a link to my announcement video and the two other announcement videos from the other two co-hosts so that you can get some ideas of what to read or if you want to join in it's running all the way through July and there's three prompts per level of beginner, intermediate or advanced so you can hop in anytime, do as little or as much as you want but let's get into the video of where I talk about how I read Shakespeare I just want to give a quick disclaimer. This is how I read Shakespeare and I don't think it's the way that everybody should read Shakespeare. You read Shakespeare how you want to, but if you want to know a bit about how I process Shakespeare, here we go. But there are seven steps to me reading Shakespeare and the first one is choosing the play. When I started to read Shakespeare first, I read it back in secondary school, didn't pay too much attention, and then I chose to do a module on it in university, chose by free will, and I kind of had to read what they were reading. But once I was reading it by myself, I went through all of the tragedies and then I kind of went through all of the comedies. I'm working through the comedies at the moment and then lastly I'm going to work my way through all of the histories. I feel like if you want to get into Shakespeare, a very good place to start with is the tragedies. His tragedy plays tend to be his most popular or the most well-known plays. And then some of the comedies, I guess, are pretty well known as well. And then the history plays are a bit more heavy because they're more entrenched in the history. He's got an agenda that he kind of has to follow in those plays and it means that they can be a bit more difficult to read or as some people think a little bit less entertaining. I don't particularly like the history plays because I don't particularly care about the British monarchy and the history of the British monarchy so that just doesn't interest me personally but if it interests you maybe you'll enjoy the history plays a lot more. The second thing I do when I read Shakespeare is I go and spoil myself completely. This is something that's very out of character for me. I detest getting spoilers. I don't want to know anything. I don't even watch film trailers because film trailers spoil the films in my opinion. So I try my best to avoid spoilers. However, with Shakespeare plays I read the synopsis and I get a full on spoiler. The place where I go to read the synopsis is the RSC website. RSC is Royal Shakespeare Company and they're the official Shakespeare company in the UK and on their website they do have a plot summary of every single play. I just type in RSC Romeo and Juliet plot summary and it'll give it to you. Sometimes in the plot summary it just gives you the whole thing and spoils everything and sometimes it gives you like a synopsis and then says don't read on anymore if you don't want to know the ending so then it doesn't spoil you but that doesn't happen in every single play. The reason that I spoil myself is because first of all <sighs> There's different reasons. So first of all, it makes it a lot easier to just understand what's happening when you read Shakespeare. Shakespeare has a tendency to have a main plot line and then a subplot line that follows these two characters that are, that is a little bit comedic or just a little bit mirroring the main plot. And sometimes that can get a bit confusing, especially when he has characters who have the same type of name, like Edgar and Edward, for example. Shakespeare loves to have similar sounding names. So it makes me avoid some of that confusion when I am reading. As well as that, in Shakespeare's time, the audience already knew what was going to be happening, seeing as Shakespeare's plays are not original ideas all the time. They're based off of different things, myths and history and other stories, which means that the fact that the play is already told doesn't ruin the enjoyment for me. Being spoiled before reading a Shakespeare play doesn't actually hinder my enjoyment of the play whatsoever. I truly believe that it enhances it. Okay, this is kind of associated to how I read Shakespeare, but I'll just mention it as my third thing. There are different editions of Shakespeare that you can get. There are these like Folger editions, I believe. And the Folger editions often have the one column of Shakespeare's text and next to it it has definitions of words or a little bit of backstory into what those words mean or why Shakespeare used that word. And if you're new to Shakespeare that can be really helpful to make sure you're understanding what these words that he, are, that he is using mean and what that reference means and it can really enhance your reading that way. However, I prefer not to use that simply because it 
it really like messes with my focus on understanding what's happening with the story because I read the story and then I read the antidote and I'm not really focusing on the story I'm just kind of reading back and forth and my brain is not computing the two at the same time so I use an edition without that but I did want to mention that you can get editions with that which can be very helpful for if you're a beginner to Shakespeare or if you just need some more help with the language because Shakespeare all language is hard to understand and process and handle. So the fourth thing that I do once I've chosen my play, once I've spoiled myself, is I make myself a very big cup of tea and I sit down and I read the play from start to finish in one sitting. That's my problem with reading Shakespeare plays is that I need to make sure I have a solid two to three hours where I don't need to do anything. It takes me about two to three hours to read a Shakespeare play and I want to read it all in one go. I tend to read Shakespeare plays all in one go just because I feel like it's the closest I can get to watching adaption but doing the reading version. I tend to read plays all in one go because plays are meant to be watched, performed all in one sitting and you just watch the play, you know. So I feel like the best way that I can get closest to that with a reading experience is just to read the play in one sitting all the way through and just get the full effect of the play. I know that might not be feasible for some people or not how people like to do it but that's just how I like to do it. Like, fully immersed in the Shakespeare play from beginning to end. So one thing I missed from when I was studying Shakespeare in uni was that after I read a play I would have a class on it where we would look at the symbolism, the imagery, some of the meanings that we get and the background of Shakespeare and I think because I did a module on Shakespeare that's kind of what I want after I've read a Shakespeare play so the next thing I'll do maybe after a couple of hours after reading the play or something I will do some research. I don't particularly look into the origins of the play where he got his ideas from or any of that or the history of the play in context of the time period but I just look into the imagery, symbolism, some of the language, some of the like a bit more on the character relationships just so I really understand some of the things that he was driving home. It's kind of how with poetry some people break down the poetry, want to look into the images and things like that. That's how I read my poetry and that's kind of how I read my plays. I like to break it down a bit more than maybe I do with a novel when I first read it. The next thing I do, which I do need to get better at before judging a Shakespeare play, is watch an adaption. I think it's really important to remember with reading play scripts is that it's actually meant to be performed on stage. You're meant to see it in action and you don't get the full effect of a play well personally I believe I don't get the full effect of a play until I've watched an adaption of it and I can definitely tell because some of my plays of Shakespeare that I read my opinion changed after watching it for example I read Romeo and Juliet and I was feeling a bit mediocre about it it's actually still not one of my favorite plays however I love adaptions of that play so much the same thing goes with Antony and Cleopatra I read it and I didn't enjoy it then I watched a brilliant brilliant adaption of it and now it's one of my favourite Shakespeare plays and I reread it and then I even enjoyed the play script itself when I reread it because I'd seen an adaption. And I think that happened with one more play. Oh, Henry the Fourth, Part One. I said history plays aren't my thing. I watched a brilliant adaption and then I loved that one. So I do think watching an adaption is a very important part of enjoying Shakespeare or enjoying plays. And the last thing is I just want to talk a bit about how I choose which adaptation I'm going to watch because there's many different adaptations of Shakespeare plays. For example, Hamlet, which is a very popular play, there's tons of ones you can watch. And I just want to talk a little bit about the three things that make me choose what adaptations I'm going to watch. So the first thing, which is really important to me, is that I'm not that keen on watching adaptations where they don't use the actual script from the play. I know that there are some which update the play and they kind of modernise it and therefore make it more understandable and more accessible to modern day viewers. And I do understand the benefits of those adaptions and I do understand why people enjoy them and sometimes if I've watched an adaptation that has the original play script in it I then go and watch something that modernizes it and it does make it more approachable however for me personally I do want to still hear Shakespeare's words even if they modernize the costumes or the set I don't particularly mind that but the language I do want it to be similar to the actual play the second thing I look for is authenticity and by that I mean Shakespeare has characters who are Jewish sometimes, Shakespeare has characters that are black and they get whitewashed or this diversity that's been implemented in the original gets completely overlooked and ignored and I think that's just something I don't enjoy seeing in adaptations at all when they kind of ruin the diversity included in the book but or exclude it so for example there are many many adaptations of Antony and Cleopatra where Cleopatra is white I don't really want to watch those ain't got time for that Othello being white 
ain't got time for that either. So I just want to see authenticity in those adaptions in that respect of the word authenticity. And the last thing I look for is generally just director and actor. I've watched quite a few plays by now, few adaptations, and I know that I tend to enjoy, for example, the 1960s Zeffirelli adaptions. I do tend to enjoy those. That's my favourite adaptation of Romeo and Juliet that I've watched to this date, so I know to just look for his kind of works and I will find them for the plays that he did do. I also look for actors. There are many different ones with like actors that we know and like. So for example, Hamlet. There's a Hamlet with David Tennant in it. There's a Hamlet with Benedict Cumberbatch in it. There's a Hamlet with oh it's escaping me but he plays Moriarty in Sherlock BBC so you can like look for actors that you tend to like there's an adaption of Han Henry the fourth part one that has Tom Hiddleston in it that's not my favorite adaption of that play but there you go you can watch Hiddleston while watching Shakespeare there's um, a Midsummer Night's Dream that has like Michelle Pfeiffer and some other famous people in it so there are famous people in adaptations and you can go and find the ones that you just want to watch and those are kind of what I look for when I'm looking for an adaptation the language, authenticity, and then who's starring in it because that might make me want to watch it more. I don't think there's anything more I can mention about how I read Shakespeare, so let me know in the comment section down below. Have you read Shakespeare or have you watched an adaptation? Which is your favourite adaptation or how do you read Shakespeare? I'm very curious. I know that Julia and Cara are making videos on the same subject. We kind of all individually had the idea and then we're like, hey we're all putting up this idea so we're not coordinating when we post that so if it's already been posted I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below if it hasn't been posted go subscribe to their channels you should do that anyway but go subscribe to their channels and you will definitely see that up at some point give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and don't forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video and you know what they say onwards and upwards excelsior